Hello everyone, welcome to another Bible study and episode review in Shady Oak Ministries. I'm of course Shady Oak, and today we're going to be discussing episode 24 of season 8 of the TV show My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, the episode Father Knows Best. Now to start this, obviously the topic of lying is fairly straightforward in Scripture. It's one of the Ten Commandments, right? Exodus 20, you shall not bear false witness. To misrepresent reality is something that is not only common to humanity, but is fairly left without better explanation as to the fact that it's wrong, biblically. But I want to go through more today with you, and in less time, in just getting straight to the point, not in being the perpetrator of lying. Hopefully we as Christians, the more and more we get to know Jesus, the less and less we'll find ourselves the perpetrators of these types of lies, and more the perpetrated. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. Uh, Spike didn't find himself the liar this time around. He was being lied to. And the lesson that we saw in today's episode, and as well as affirmed biblically, was being able to spot that liar. Now before we get into any of that, I want to clarify for you how God feels about liars and about lying in general. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, note that for number two, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Now notice, of the six things that God hates, he said lying twice, and that should tell us something. Firstly, it's much like the quote from the famous philosopher and comedian Ron Swanson who said, there's two things I hate in this world, lying and skim milk, which is water lying about being milk. Well, God essentially said the same thing. When he talked about the six things that he hates, he said, hey, I'm just going to say lying twice to make a point. Why? Not because he hates the ones who lie, but he knows what something can do to someone. When God hates something, it's because he knows what it does to someone. And that's something that we would do well to take note of. God knows how to hate the sin, but not the sinner. Well, if we're dealing with the sin then, the missing of God's standard to misrepresent reality, which is, in a sense, all that lying really is, it's making up your own reality and forcing others to live in it with you so long as they buy it, what did we see as far as today's episode goes in how Sludge, Spike's supposed father, was misrepresenting reality? Well, he lied about his relationship with Spike. He misrepresented the reality of their parental and fraternal bond. He lied about his reasons for staying in the castle instead of for recovery or for Spike's sake to teach him how to be a real dragon. More on this in a moment but also just to freeload and what we were almost expecting to make him grow in size through the amount of hoarded resources he was accumulating. But lastly, and most definitely personally for Spike, he lied about what a real dragon is. Now, how do we spot the lie when similar frauds come our way? Well, you could take logic and philosophy, but I think the most straightforward way of being able to spot a counterfeit is to know the real deal. When people are being trained in the Treasury Department, for example, and handling money in any nation that you want to think of, they aren't going to train people to spot counterfeits by coming up with every possible way someone could distort a real piece of currency and say, okay, learn all these differences because there will be no end to them, right? As long as there is something good, there will be someone who finds a new way to twist it. But on the other hand, if they figure out what a real piece of currency looks like, then even the smallest difference is going to be spotted a mile away. How did Spike spot Sludge's con man routine? He went to Smolder, and he found out what a real dragon was. So with that in mind then, biblically I want to point out to you guys three things to look for in being able to spot a liar, and how to know the real deal from the fraud. First, when spotting a liar, you're going to find inconsistency, meaning that they'll say one thing at one point and then divert to another standard at another time. Like Sludge's background story about Spike, for example. A liar is someone who isn't content with reality, so they make up their own. And while this is something easy to start, we all know that it's something very hard to keep up. 
no matter what you want reality to be, it doesn't care what you've made up about it and will remain what it is. Which is why phase two is actually what you see the most of. The second thing in spotting a lie is emotionalism. Now note, I'm not saying that anyone who brings their emotions into a conversation is lying to you. That is often the case, but oftentimes also in cultures where they basically say if you don't have your heart behind something, it shows that you don't sincerely believe it. You need to understand the context. But when you see, for example, Sludge's response when Rainbow Dash started asking questions about his origin story for the scale snatchers and so forth, what did he do? Oh, he diverted right to crying, to anger, to anything else to end the conversation before it started. And this could be seen in name calling, this could be seen to just demonstrations of pure outrage at the very notion that you would dare question something so serious as what they're trying to make up. Did I say that out loud? You see the point. Now, lastly and most directly, and this is where we'll get into our second passage for the day, in John chapter 8 verse 44, the third way to spot a liar is the fruit, what naturally comes out of them. Like Sludge's eventual showing of his true intentions, a liar can only look like a good guy for so long before you naturally start to reflect the heart of the first liar. Jesus, speaking to a group of people who wanted to kill him for telling them the truth, told them, quite bluntly, John chapter 8, verse 44, You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. So you're already wanting to kill me because you're taken after dear old dad. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the, catch this, especially in light of today's episode, the father of it. Now, how do we spot a liar then? Well, to quote Drake and Josh, it's to know the truther. John 14, verse 6, Jesus speaking to his apostles when they asked him, how can we know the way to the Father? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that second one is key in our conversation here today. Jesus identified himself as the truth incarnate. And when we're talking about this being that didn't just claim to be the truth, but claimed to be God himself. Think about that for a second. A liar is someone who distorts reality into what they want it to be and try and get you to play along as long as you're buying it. Jesus spoke reality into existence. His opinion literally is what made our universe. So when you're thinking about this for a second, if you know the voice that spoke reality to an, into existence, do you think you'll be able to almost instinctually recognize someone who says something other than what the first voice said? Now again, when Spike was in doubt, what did he do? He went to Smolder to spot a real dragon from a false one. So what are we supposed to do as Christians? When we are in doubt, go to Jesus to spot a true savior, a true friend, a true comforter from a false one. Thank you for your time and listening to the study. If you have any sincere questions or would like to know more, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to encourage the ministry, you know where to go. But most importantly, if you know someone who would be blessed by this message, could benefit from hearing what we talked about, share this message yourself or the video. Let me do it for you. But either way, I want to thank you for your time and listening to the study. Remember that Jesus loves you and he has more to offer you than just making you feel comfortable. He has the truth. And the more that you are content with reality, the less you'll have to not only exert effort to twist it, but also have direct access to the one who you can be able to use as the standard to spot others who are trying to do the same.